Hey, welcome back. You're watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. Now, when you get through all the clutter from getting your day started, you tune in for a Liquid Lunch. We don't just bring you the best of the news, markets, and politics. We bring you the real guests who know where the rubber meets the road. And we bring them from both sides. We bring them from all sides. In my favorite segment, we call it the Mix It Up. Democrat, Republican. Topics of the day, they mix it up, slug it out. At the end, the one rule is thoughtful conversation is had. Everyone shakes hands apart, friends. Joining me today, two of my favorites, Bill Cortez joins us today. He's a Republican strategist and uh, decorated veteran. And uh, Josh Kravitz, he's, a, he's a, a Democratic leader here in New York. He's also uh, running for New York City Council. And uh, I just want to point out, if any of his opponents would like to appear on Liquid Lunch, feel free to reach out. We're happy to have you on. So, guys, thank you for joining us to kick thank off you. this week. It's a Money Monday, so we bring in the money guests. Um, the whole Iran thing, to me seems to be blowing up in the Democrats' faces again because all they can talk about is now uh, escalation, which didn't escalate, and was it imminent, whether it was or not, a terror leader is gone. Let's take a look at what Rand Paul had to say, and I want to get you guys' views on it. I'm going to ask you, do you agree with President Trump that the Iraq war was a mistake? You know what? Most of them don't agree with him. He keeps appointing people to represent him that think the Iraq war was just great. They'd love Dick Cheney's position, and they still don't admit there was a mistake. So that's why he keeps getting policy that isn't his policy. But I do think his instincts are pure. He's been saying it since he, you know, 20, 30 years. He's been saying it for a long time. So, yeah, he does have a history of saying, let's get out of wars. Um, I think when John Bolton was in, he was getting some bad advice. But, Bill, you've been on all sides. You've been on the civilian side. You've been on the military side. That's your community. Was, is he getting good advice, do you think? Well, I think, remember, George W. Bush ran in 2000 on uh, opposing nation building. And, you know, the, the dynamics and the things that happened in, on 9-11, things change. When you receive that first intelligence briefing and you see the threats that are out there, I think it changes your view, and things on the ground obviously are not always going to coincide with uh, you know, what you ran on in the, uh, on a campaign. And so I think it's a reality. These things, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, um, both of them were things that he inherited from Barack Obama, who inherited them from George W. Bush. Um, this, is, this is nothing new on, uh, in U.S. foreign policy, having to deal with your predecessor's um, mistakes, um, good and bad. Um, but I think that uh, the president acted the way... Uh, uh, I think it properly in what he needed to do. This is someone who was who has American blood on his hands. Um, for Democrats to say, well, this is this makes the Middle East, uh, you know, unpredictable. Uh, welcome to the Middle East as it's been for thousands of years now. So I think the president did the right thing. Democrats falling all over themselves to defend someone like Josh, Soleimani. You, you kind think of, we'll, you think we'd be better off today with the devil we know in Soleimani still running things, or we're better off right now? You know, I, but I just want to stop before I answer that question to say Democrats aren't aren't defending Soleimani. No one is shedding a tear. I mean, I remember I was here also the day that al-Baghdadi died, and you said to me, are you happy that he died? And I said, yes, of course. And you said, really? And I said, yeah, of course. I'm an American. Of course. The ISIS leader is dead. Yeah, of course. We're all on the same page about that. But the question is, is how are we advancing our strategic interests? Are we thinking strategically? Are we thinking rationally? Are we thinking with long-term and short-term consequences at play? So. What the reporting shows this morning is no, there weren't, an, there wasn't an imminent threat on four embassies, and, and actually the defense secretary yesterday morning said that there weren't, that there was not imminent, an imminent threat, and there was no intelligence to support that. What we learned this morning is that Trump approved the killing of Soleimani seven months ago. So when they say it's an imminent threat, seven months ago, the, the, uh, he had already decided that he was willing to do it. So the question is, why, is, but why do we have to mince words? Well, no, that's you know the what justification. I'm seven months ago, they said this guy is a biggest, a big enough threat that he's threatening us in a lot of places. Is he's threatening our interests in Israel and the Middle East and all over the place. If we get a shot at him and we think something bad's about to happen, boom, let's take him. But well, look, part he, two doesn't exist. There was no, we think something bad's going to happen. Well, he was just well, leaving the embassy listen, that we, they were having an uprising. They, they attribute about 600 U.S. deaths to Soleimani right now over the past 15 years. So to say that he hasn't been operational, I mean, I think you're, we're trying to, like, parse words here now. Yeah, I mean, the truth is that the guy has been operational. He has killed Americans. <laughs> Right? He is the one who is stretching Iran's influence uh, all across the Middle East 
from Iran to, to the Mediterranean through through their proxies in Lebanon and, and Syria and Yemen. So I, I completely agree, but last time I was on... They agreed, I gotta ring the bell, I'm sorry. <laughs> we agree a lot. We, we do, on. we do. So, 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 so um, one thing I would say is, is, again, like I said this last week, the United States isn't in the business of killing bad guys just for the sake of killing bad guys. We could kill Kim in North Korea if we wanted to, but we don't because there are a lot of consequences to that. There are 50,000 rockets trained at Seoul right now. So we don't take that choice because it's not in our strategic interest. Just Kim just de deserved to die in North Korea. He starves his own people. Millions of people die. He killed Otto Warmbier for no reason and tortured him, right? I mean, he deserves to die. He's not a good guy, but we don't do that because it doesn't advance our interests. So the question is, is Trump ma making a decision that advances our interests? And is he thinking strategically in, with both short-term and long-term consequences? It remains to be seen, but I don't see him as much of a strategic thinker. I know you guys think he plays 3D chess all day. All I right, you know what? I, I, look, <laughs> I think this. We're all in agreement on one thing. Yes. A bad guy who did not have the interests of America at heart is exterminated. And that's probably a good thing for us and our kids, okay? Um, whether or not it has some other collateral effects, like the, the Iraqi parliament has asked us to leave Iraq. Well, that should make you happy then. Because if we leave Iraq, then most of the guys on your side have been saying, let's get out of Iraq for years. So they get an unintended consequence. That's good. Right? Well, but again, it comes back to the, the, the method as well, right? Like, do I think that the United States should leave Iraq and Afghanistan, to Frank's point earlier? Of course, of course. These wars have gone on for 17 years. We spent trillions of dollars. We could have ended, po we could have ended homelessness in America three times over with the amount of money we spend in these countries, right? So, of course, we should be leaving Iraq, but we should do it strategically and with a plan. Because at the end of the day, ISIS still has a presence in Western in Iraq and in eastern Syria, and if we can re either keep a presence or at least assure that ISIS right, is still being I'm going to put that on the record that Josh said he wants to maybe keep a presence in Iraq. I'm going to make a note of that. Okay, let's bring it back to our shores. Okay, <laughs> here in America, Nancy Pelosi is um, still refusing to turn over the articles of impeachment. She came out with a big announcement last week that she was going to do it sometime this week. Is this getting out of control or what, Billy? I mean, she, they voted to impeach, but they haven't impeached them yet. Remember, this, this was a priority. This was important to get this done. And then when she realized that the House wasn't going to dictate to, uh, to Mitch McConnell uh, how they were going to conduct their trial, uh, she sat on them and held them. And I think a lot of Democrats took, are taking a lot of heat around in these swing districts. And so they're starting to feel that political blowback. Um, I think she said she's finally going to send them over, I think, today or tomorrow. And so we're going to see. We're going to see the trial. Um, we're going to know what's, what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, it's amazing to, to think that she thought she had some leverage on McConnell, who I think has been the ultimate chess player here. There was a word flo floating around yesterday that they were going to only send over one article, and they were going to hold on to one in case there might be some new evidence. Yeah, that was George Conway's and Neil Patyal's op-ed in the Washington Post. It was very interesting. Right. But I just want to go back to one thing that Bill said, one word that Bill said, because he said trial. 